Let's bring in Kirk Herbstreet from the Mothership. And uh, Herbie joins us now. Herbie, a great job, you and Chris, last night. And uh, congratulations throughout the bowl season. What were your expectations? When that game started, what did you think was going to happen? You know, I, I thought there was so much talk <clears throat> leading up to the, to the game that it would be physical and low scoring and, you know, just, just about the running games. The, the familiarity with the, with the two coaches <clears throat> and the staffs uh, on both sides, I thought it would be more about the quarterback play. I, I thought Jake Fromm would, would be given opportunities because it's so tough to run the ball uh, against Bama. So I thought he would be, he would have chances to make plays. And I wondered about Jalen Hurts, a guy that just has not progressed as a passer, seeing coverage, making decisions, working through progressions with Brian Dable, who came over from the Patriots. He just hasn't, stepped up in that in that uh, fashion so I, I knew he could run but I, di I didn't think he could throw consistently so I, I thought Georgia because the better quarterback play probably had a little bit of an advantage coming into the game but I, I thought the quarterbacks would, would be the, eventually be the difference in the game when did you get word that there was going to be a quarterbacking change at halftime well I, it's funny we met with uh, with with Nick two days a day or two before the game and there's always that when you do an Alabama game, there's always that kind of, is, are they going to put to it in the game feel? It, it's been going on since he came in the spring of last year and threw for over 300 yards. Their fan base went, oh my gosh, this guy can throw. Mm -hmm. We got to play him. And yet Jalen Hurts got him to the national championship as a freshman. So it's kind of been lingering. He just hasn't ever been given an opportunity to have meaningful snaps. So when you sit down to call the national championship and, and, and coach and I and Chris, we all have a really uh, pretty candid relationship. And I said, you know, midway through it, I said, all right, coach 13, you know, is, is this, is there a chance? Is there a series? You know, <laughs> and, and he kind of crossed his arms and got a little uncomfortable. And he said, you know, it, you know, it, it, there's a chance. And I said, is it, is it a gut feel? Is, is it, is it premeditated? And he said, it's probably a little more premeditated. And then I, I kept pushing, which he doesn't like. And I said, uh, you know, I said, well, what if he goes in and he goes eight plays, 80 yards, touchdown? And then he got kind of mad at me. He's like, listen, I got enough going on. I don't, I don't, I don't have time for, I don't have time for high hypotheticals. And it's and it because I mean, this Galen Hurts is 25 and two. He gets you to two straight national championships. You put in Tua. What if he goes in and does really well? And there's a, there's a switch. That was my point. And so anyway, that was the backdrop. So then we get into the game, and clearly Bama's offense isn't doing a lot. They're very one-dimensional. They're running the ball. They couldn't get the tailbacks going. Uh, Alabama's lo or Georgia's loaded up against the run. So when Tom Rinaldi interviewed him at, going off at halftime, if you listen very closely to what Nick said, based on our meeting the day before, and then what he said to Tom Rinaldi when they threw it back up to us before we went to halftime with Reese, I said, would not be surprised yeah. if, if Tua got an opportunity to tr maybe tr provide a spark in the second half. That's, that's all I said. It was more of speculation than inside info. And sure enough, we kept cameras on him when he came out after, after halftime. And, and right away, you could tell that he got his helmet on and guys were coming over high-fiving him. And it was like, oh, boy, here we go. Kid's going to get a shot. And just based on watching him in practice, we, we've been around Alabama – We've all known what he was capable of doing in practice. Would he do it on that stage in that game against the speed of that defense? That was the mystery. And, of course, he ended up delivering. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm making too much of it, but to me, to have a coach who makes that call at halftime, down 13 nothing national title game, with a starter who's the former offensive player of the year in the SEC, who's 25-2, and two, and you make that call, and you make that call because you know that that could have reverberations into the second half, obviously, but next season as well, that now mm -hmm. we're talking about Jalen Hurts maybe transferring, and then this kid might be one of the front runners for the Heisman. I mean, it, 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 it's unbelievable, really, to make that call. Dan, I don't think we can make a big enough deal about it because it, it, it gave Alabama a national championship, and, and, it, and it, as you said, the risk – and you're 25 and two. This guy's got you to two straight national championships, and to be, you know, maybe only Nick Saban makes that call because of the confidence that he has in who he is. But it's unprecedented. I, I've never seen anything like that. That kid, again, he looks great last night. He's done only played mop up duty. Mm -hmm. Hasn't taken. Think about that. A meaningful snap. <laughs> and coach says 
you know what? We know what he's done against our own defense. This defense plays very similar defense that we play. We need a spark. And Brian Dable, the, the offensive coordinator, who's done a great job of, of I call it kind of complimentary football as a play caller. He's typically very conservative. Uh, uh, going into the game, Jalen Hurts only one interception. They're very cautious with him. He, in my opinion, he's had one arm tied behind his back as a play caller because they just don't have the ability to throw the ball. You put Tua in, and it was almost like, and Brian Dable loves Jalen Hurts. It's not that. It's all of a sudden, bang, open up this side of the play sheet, and you could just feel, I'm sure watching, and we could feel from up in the booth, different energy, different pace. All of a sudden, they start to get some tempo going. The scramble on third and seven, where he showed some toughness and some grit to pick it up, gave him a little bit of momentum. They score a touchdown. The defense kind of feeds off of the energy coming from Tua. And you've seen it in the pro game a lot when a guy does that. that the, not, not only affecting the offense, but the, the energy in the stadium, the defense starts to play with a little bit of an attitude. and He really sparked that team to, to allow them to come back, tie the game, and end up winning it at overtime. Yeah, we're talking to Kirk Herbstreet from the Mothership, called the game last night with Chris Fowler. Uh, by the way, the overnight rating is 16.7. That's up 9% from, uh, from last year. Um, you brought up a point where I thought it was really interesting, but it was very sneaky what you said, that you thought that Saban had up-tempo almost to keep Tua from not being able to think too much. So he had to just sort mm-hmm. of react and not sit there and think as you have a freshman in the biggest game of his life. I thought it was a, it was a great point, but it was just a, you know, like, oh, by the way, threw this out there and then back to the game action. Right. So I thought it was a great point that yeah, you made. Yeah. And I think we see that in all sports. Sometimes when, when you have a young player, on, especially on that big of a stage, the, the, the quicker you can go and the more instinctive he can be, where he doesn't have to sit there and think about, oh, my gosh, you know, this is a big play. Um, I think it kind of gets them into a rhythm and gets them to kind of forget about some of the distractions. And, and I thought that, that they really sensed when to put their foot on the accelerator and when to pull back. And after that, that scramble and that first drive, he just seemed to kind of settle in. I thought the, 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 maybe the biggest play of the game, remember when he rolled left, and for whatever reason, maybe we'll find out later, all of his receivers in the tight end are blocking. They're, they're, they're 12 yards downfield blocking, and it was the only time he really showed his use. He's rolling left, and he just kind of, no one's looking. Imagine the receivers, everybody has their back to you, and they're blocking, and he just kind of forced it in there and tried to hope that somebody might turn around eventually and catch the ball, and instead... Georgia gets a big interception, yeah. and you're thinking, oh, my gosh. And the shot that we had of him coming over, who in the world does this to Nick Saban? He's a freshman. <laughs> it's about his personality. He comes over, he's got his arm around Nick Saban's neck, and he's like, oh, he should almost feel him being like, oh, coach, that one's on me. My bad. I'll get it back. My bad. And it was just like most guys throw an interception. They run to the other end of the team's uh, box, and it's like, maybe he won't see me over here. Instead, he comes right over with a kind of a smile on his face. And, Man, coach, that was on me. you know. And, and sure enough, they come back, and they hit another big play. And the, how about the touchdown pass to Ridley where he scrambles left, last second, delivers the ball. Um, just so many big plays that, that uh, you know, we'll go back and look at it. How did this one happen and how did that one happen? It was, it was incredible. Hey, Herbie, uh, pass along to uh, Chris. I, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. I love the Rose Bowl as well. And, uh, you know, hopefully you get a little bit of downtime. Thanks uh, for joining us. Yeah. Hey, thanks a lot, Dan. Look forward to watching you this rest of the postseason. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you, buddy. That's uh, Kirk Herbstreet from the Mothership. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.